How did David treat Shimei and Mephibosheth upon his return? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of 2 Samuel on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 18 to 30. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 18. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 2 Samuel chapter 19, beginning of verse 18. Then a ferry boat went across to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. Now Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king when he had crossed the Jordan. Then he said to the king, Do not let my lord impute iniquity to me, or remember what wrong your servant did on the day that my lord the king left Jerusalem, that the king should take it to heart. For I, your servant, know that I have sinned. Therefore, here I am, the first to come today of all the house of Joseph, to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah, that you should be adversaries to me today? Shall any man be put to death today in Israel? For do I not know that today I am king over Israel? Therefore the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king swore to him. Now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and he had not cared... He had not cared for his feet, nor trimmed his mustache, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he returned in peace. So it was, when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I will saddle a donkey for myself, that I may ride on it and go to the king, because your servant is lame. And he has slandered your servant to my lord the king, but my lord the king is like the angel of God. Therefore, do what is good in your eyes. For all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. You, yet you set your servant among those who eat at your own table. Therefore, what right have I to cry out any more to the king? So the king said to him, Why do you speak any more of your matters? I have said, You and Ziba divide the land. Then Mephibosheth said to the king, Rather let him take it all, inasmuch as my lord the king has come back in peace to his own house. David is now in the process of returning from exile after being overthrown by his son Absalom. This return wasn't immediate, but was initiated by the northern tribes first and then the tribe of Judah. For David to return as king, he must leave Mahanaim and Gilead, where he had been, and return to Jerusalem, Israel's capital. He would have crossed the Jordan River near Gilgal, which from our study of Joshua, we know is near where Jericho would have been before it was destroyed. Now, we don't often think about it, but crossing the Jordan River here is not simply a task of wading out into the water and crossing over. That is why the waters had to be parted for Israel to cross over in the days of the conquest. Rather, what verse 18 describes are fairy-like structures that would shuttle people across the river from one side to the other. Now, we saw in the last lesson that Shimei, the son of Gera, had been there, and with David crossing over now to be king again, he, he fell down before the king to plead for mercy. Recall to back when David was fleeing that Shimei from the tribe of Benjamin cursed David through most of his initial escape. Now, to some, it might be confusing as to why Shimei said that he was the first of the house of Joseph to come and meet David, but this is likely a reference to the northern tribes of Israel, excluding Judah and maybe Simeon, who lived among Judah. As up until that time, that division among Israel has existed. Shimei said that David deserved what he was getting for usurping the house of Saul from being king. Now, with it evident David was returning as king, it could very well be possible that David orders Shimei to be executed for what he said earlier. And that's why Shimei came to David in acknowledgement of his sin in cursing David and seeking in his seeking forgiveness and mercy on the part of David. Abishai, Joab's brother, wanted to hear nothing of it, telling the king that Shimei deserved to die. And in a sense, Abishai is not wrong, for Exodus 22 verse 28 says, 
you shall not you shall not revile God nor curse a ruler of your people. But David did not want to do that on the day he was returning to be king. And so he rebuked Abishai again for wanting to kill Shimei. For recall that Abishai wanted to kill Shimei when they left for cursing David. David then turned to Shimei and swore to him that he would not die for his actions. Thus, David extended mercy here to one who didn't deserve it, so that his return from exile would be a happier one and not a one where David took revenge on all his enemies. And David might have been commended for this, had it not been for his actions towards Shimei in the latter days of his life, something that we'll see, the Lord willing, when we get to our study of verse Kings. The next account that we have concerns Mephibosheth. From the language used here, it appears that this is out of order, for, da for David will meet Mephibosheth while in Jerusalem, due to Mephibosheth being lame, while verse 31, which deals with Barzillai, occurs as David is crossing the Jordan. Why this meeting is recorded out of order, we don't know, but perhaps clo uh, it, is close, uh, it is to close the account with Ziba, who came down to meet David at the Jordan, uh, as verse 17 said. David, when he meets Mephibosheth, asks ask why Mephibosheth didn't accompany David in fleeing, to which Mephibosheth responded that he had fully intended to. In fact, Ziba said that he was fetching him a donkey to do so, but Ziba had deceived him and left him behind. Moreover, Mephibosheth told David that Ziba had slandered him and that he did not want David to be overthrown, for David had shown kindness towards his household even when they didn't deserve it. And to show that his words were genuine, you only had to look at Mephibosheth's appearance. He had not cared for his feet, trimmed his mustache, nor washed his clothes since David left. Since Mephibosheth did not know if David would return, this is something that he could not fake, showing David that he was telling the truth. But David had given Ziba all the land that was Mephibosheth's, and Ziba had been helpful to David on his way out of Jerusalem by providing him with supplies. What was David to do? Well, he decided to split the land between Mephibosheth and Ziba. This was an equitable, equitable treatment, for even though Ziba had helped David, he did so by lying about Mephibosheth. How was this fair? And the answer is, it wasn't. But scripture isn't reporting to us what David did here was right. It is reporting to us what David did. And as we've seen in the past few chapters, David didn't always do what he should have, but rather showed weakness in carrying out proper judgment. Now Mephibosheth tells David that Ziba can keep the land, for what was important was that David had come home in peace. In this, Mephibosheth shows more character than David did regarding this matter. We'll continue with this, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 31 to 39, as we continue our walk through the Bible. One verse at a time. Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.